Hey guys, in this lesson we would understand the basics of polynomial functions. Let's first understand what is a polynomial function. A function that is written in the form a n x to the power n plus a n minus 1 x to the power n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 x to the power n minus 2 so on until we reach a 2 x to the power of 2 plus a 1 x to the power of 1 plus a 0 x to the power of 0. Now what does the meaning of a n, a n minus 1, a n minus 2, a 2, a 1, a naught here is? So starting from a 0 to a n, this is nothing but just a number and this can be any real number. When we say real number, it could be any decimal number, could be any integer, could be any square root number. So real number means any number can take the place of a here. Now the meaning of n, n minus 1, n minus 2, 2, 1, 0 is not that there is a subscript number to it. It means that this a n is a real number for x to the power of n. Or we can say this a n is a constant for x to the power of n. Similarly, a n minus 1 is a constant for x to the power n minus 1. Now to understand that, we should first know what is the meaning of n here. n is any whole number. n can only be a whole number. Whole numbers are not the decimal numbers, they're not negative numbers, they are just simple numbers that are positive. For example, 3, 1, 2, 4, 5, no decimals, no square roots up to whatever the infinity number is. Now the reason we are writing it as n, n minus 1, n minus 2 is that when we arrange a polynomial function, it is arranged in decreasing order of the powers because these n, n minus 1, n minus 2, 2, 1, 0, these act as powers of x and when we write on a polynomial function in standard form, we arrange it in the decreasing order of the powers. These powers, which is denoted as n, is always supposed to be a whole number. That is the most important thing to remember for a polynomial function. Let's take an example. Let's say we have 5x to the power of 4 plus 3x squared plus 8x plus 2. And if we are asked to figure out if this is a polynomial or not, what we notice is this is what stands for the a value. Now here we notice we do not have any x. When we do not have any x, that means we have x to the power of 0. Here x is no power, it means x is to the power of 1. So a would be 2 here. We notice here that the power 4 is there, power 2 is there, power 1 is there, power 0 is there. They're all in decreasing order and power 3 is missing. That means this can be said as 5x to the power of 4 plus 0x to the power of 3 plus 3x to the power of 2 plus 8x to the power of 1 plus 2x to the power of 0. So this comes from here, this comes from here, this comes from here, and this comes from here. In between, x to the power of 3 is missing. If that is missing, that means its constant, a value, is supposed to be a 0. Because 0 multiplied by anything will be a 0. And since it is turned into a 0, therefore it goes missing. So now, if we write down the general form of a polynomial function underneath this, this means a of 4, x to the power of 4. This means a of 3, x to the power of 3. This means a of 2, x to the power of 2. This means a of 1, x to the power of 1. This means a of 0, x to the power of 0. So 5 is nothing but a constant where x has a power of 4. That's why we put these numbers same. So this means it's the constant where x has a power of 4. 0 is the constant value of x that has a power of 3, represented as a3. 3 is the constant number for x to the power of 2 that is represented by a2. 8 is the constant value of x to the power of 1, therefore it is represented as a of 1. 2 is the constant value for x to the power of 0, therefore it is represented as a 
0. And we notice that these are placed in decreasing order as well. So if n is 4, n minus 1 is 3, n minus 2 is 2, n minus 3 is 1, and n minus 4 stands for 0 here. So this is just the general denotion of a polynomial function. What is the most important thing to remember here is that these a values or the constant numbers that are before the x value, they can be any real number and the power of x can only be a whole number. These are the two important things that we have to remember in order to identify a polynomial function. Let's take up a question where we have to determine if the given functions are polynomials or not. What all we have to see is whether the a constant is a real number and x to the power n is a whole number. So when we look here in the first function, we have the entire function x plus 1 under a square root. So x does not have an individual power that is a whole number because square root means the whole thing has a power of half. So this means x plus 1 square root is whole x plus 1 would have a power of have. And we are supposed to have the individual x variable as a power of a whole number which we do not see here. Therefore, this function is not a polynomial function. Next we have is fx is equal to 5x minus 1. Now the definition of a polynomial function is we need to have x with the power of whole number. Here we do not see x as any power, so therefore the power is 1. This constant 1 has no x, that means x must have had a power of 0. We have an a value, that is a real number. We have an x value to the power of n, where n is a whole number. Then we have an a value, which is a minus 1. We have an x value that has a power of a whole number. So this is an integer. This is a whole number. These are whole numbers. So it fulfills the definition of a polynomial. Therefore, this is a polynomial function. Another thing we notice here is that if fx is 5x minus 1, that means x is a power of 1. This is a linear function. So from here, we can conclude that a linear function is a polynomial function. So anytime we see any linear equation, we would just call it a polynomial example. Let's take up the next example where we have fx is equal to square root 5x minus 3x square. Now we notice here that the square root is on the number 5. Therefore, this represents an a value which is a real number. x has no power means x is a power of 1. Next, we have an a value that is negative 3 and this is an integer. Integers, decimals, square roots, they are all part of real numbers. This is a square root, it's a real number. This is an integer, it's a real number. So, a is a real number in this example. Now, let's look at our powers of x. We see power of x is 1 here and we see power of x is 2 here. These are whole numbers. So the power of x, which is n, is a whole number in both of these terms. Therefore, we would say, yes, this is a polynomial function. Now, the only thing is that this is not arranged, but arrangement is not part of the definition of a polynomial function. We can write it in arranged manner. Arranged means decreasing order of the powers. So this can be written as fx is equal to minus 3x square plus root 5x to the power of 1. This and this means the same thing. It's just reordering it. Therefore, the question given to us in this form is also called a polynomial function. And if the same question is given to us in this form, it will also be called a polynomial function. Next we have is fx is equal to square root 5x minus 3x square. Now here we notice the difference between these two questions is that if this was just the part of the question, then it would have been called a polynomial. However, we notice here that we have a square root over 5 and we also have a square root over x. If the square root was just over 5, then it is called a polynomial function because the square root is not on x. 
and x is going to have a power of a whole number. In this case, if I want to write down x in simplified terms, it would be written as x to the power of half. And we cannot have anything apart from a whole number as a power of x. This is a fraction on the power of x. Therefore, no matter what is there in this term, because of this term, this function is not a polynomial function. Because the definition of a polynomial function wants your x to have a power of a whole number only in all the terms of a given question. Let's take up this example. If we have fx is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 2 over x minus 3. Now when we just look at the numerator term of this function, we see this is x to the power of 2. No number present in front means a is 1. Minus 4x to the power of 1 plus 2. No x means x is to the power of 0. So if we just look at this, these are our real numbers and these are whole numbers. Then we would call the numerator as a polynomial function. However, this question just does not come with the numerator. It also has a denominator x minus 3. x minus 3 individually is also a function because x has a power of 1 and this is 3x to the power of 0 as there is no variable there. But when this question is taken together as fx, then it becomes not a polynomial function. The reason being is numerator is like this. When we bring the denominator x minus 3 on top, the power becomes a negative 1. This is the other form we can write down this fx in. And we notice here that this x would have a power of negative 1. And negative 1 is not a whole number. Therefore, because of this bracket, this whole function becomes a non-polynomial function. Let's take up this example now. y is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 2. We notice here if we want to write it as same as the general form of polynomial function, we can fill up the missing blanks. So here, no number means 1 is there. x to the power of 2 or x to the power of 1 minus 2x to the power of 0. You need not do this step. It's just for you to understand. So this is a x to the power of a whole number plus a x to the power of a whole number minus a x to the power of a whole number. Therefore, this is a polynomial function. And we also notice one more thing because this has a power of 2 and it looks like a quadratic function that you have been dealing with in the previous grades. So from here we notice that if a function is a quadratic function, it is an example of a polynomial function. So be it a quadratic or a linear, both of these functions are examples of polynomial functions. Now one more thing to remember for the basics of polynomial functions is that a polynomial function can be written in three forms. One is called the standard form, second is the vertex form, and third is the factored form. Example of a standard form is the general polynomial function equation. So if we have a polynomial as fx is equal to 3x cubed plus 2x squared plus 5x minus 1, it's called the standard form of polynomial because we have written the terms separately. When we talk about a vertex form, if the function is written as an a value, x minus h to the power. This power could be any number from now onwards. It could be power 1, power 2, power 3, power 4, or so on. So let's say if I put a power 3 here, then it is called the vertex form. General form of vertex form is ax minus h to the power of n plus k. n is always a whole number. Then only it's called a polynomial. And when it comes to factored form, factored form is when we have fx equal to an a value and we have these brackets here. So we notice here that the brackets are not separated with a plus or minus sign. They are just separated with a multiplication sign or it's just a product of it. This is also called writing a polynomial function in one term. However, this one term contains bracket bracket form. So if there is more than one bracket separated by a product sign or no sign, 
then it is an example of a factored form. Since we know quadratic is an example of a polynomial function, that's the reason we learn quadratic function in standard vertex and factored form. So standard form of a quadratic function was fx is equal to ax square plus bx plus c. You see all the terms are written separately. So there is a constant x with a power of a whole number, b represents a constant, x with a power of a whole number, c represents a constant, where if x was there, it would have a power of 0. Any number raised to the power of 0 or any variable raised to the power of 0 is 1. Since x to the power 0 is 1, that's how c is left alone. Vertex form of a quadratic function is fx equal to a x minus h square plus k because it's a quadratic function so power has to be 2 therefore n is specifically 2 here and the factored form is fx is equal to a x minus r x minus s form and we notice here this is a bracket bracket form separated by a product sign or multiplication sign or no sign. Here R and S are basically the constant values. So from here also we get an assurance that a quadratic function is a type or is an example of a polynomial function.